Good morning, rock stars. Scott Hamilton here, Rock File, back with another podcast review for your ears. Going to be talking about the brand new release, The Northman. Funny how we pronounce it, The Northman, but it, you know, it's The Northman. And wow, what a movie. Short version of this if you've ever wanted to see a great Viking movie, there's never been a movie like this. You will be dipped into the world, submerged into this world for a little over two hours, and you'll come out a different person. If you're not into Viking movies or the idea of where this movie goes, you're not going to, you know, um, it's not for everybody. (laughs) But if it's your cup of tea, it's the best there is. That's the short version. Robert Edgar's easily one of my favorite filmmakers, and he did that on one movie, The Witch. It was one of those movies that was so authentic you could smell and taste the movie. It, literally, they built all the sets from scratch using the wood from the time and the area. I mean, they go to such great lengths to make it authentic. That comes through in the movie making. It doesn't always. Spielberg and a lot of other people used to build a lot of big practical sets, and it, they were amazing. But... Robert Edgers, when he makes a movie, everything in the frame has been put there on purpose. And it's, I don't know. I I just, after the first movie, I I was blown away by his skill and look forward to the next one. I went to see The Lighthouse um, in an AMC theater where you can eat dinner. It's one of those that that dine and movie or whatever, which was an interesting experience and a perfect experience for that movie because that's one. I understand that he is an acquired taste, but the technical skill involved in his movies is is unbelievable for somebody of his age or his career status. He's made, you know, two movies up to now. And both of those movies were independent films. He had total control and final cut and never a lot of money. This is a universal picture. He had 70 to $90 million. You give a guy who makes a million dollars look like 10 or a hundred million. Um, and you give him that kind of money. (laughs) He had the idea with Alexander Skarsgård to make a Viking epic. They felt that there'd never really been one. The ones from the, you know, the fifties and sixties or whatever, they're, they're cheesy. What they are, the TV shows that have been about Vikings haven't been accurate. Um, and if, they're going to put the Robert Edgar's lens on something. Why not this? Because it's just something that's kind of, you know, missing. You're going to hear a lot of people talk when this the movie came out yesterday. Um, you're going to hear a lot of talk about um, how authentic it is and how they went a year in advance and planted the correct grass so the grass would be the right length a year later for the scenes that they were going to film there. That's, you know, that kind of attention to detail. I don't know. I don't know that I remembered any grass in the film, but that attention to detail again comes through in the film. There's a complete transformation by the actors into these, 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 I don't want to call them characters. They feel like real people. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays. So far, the reviews have been fantastic. It's 90 something percent on Rotten Tomatoes so far. Um, but it's definitely not politically correct, was, used to be the term. I mean, it's very, it tells the time of just before 900 AD. Looks it, feels it, you smell it. You're going to learn things. You're going to be surprised by things. Um, some of the, I, I don't want to get into spoilers. You need to experience this on your own. That's why I'm kind of dancing around anything. Um, there's complete transformations by the most of the actors. Um, I thought Nicole Kidman was good she doesn't have a whole lot to do and um she has a few big scenes but that's i thought she was fine i mean she's really quality good these days i I just find her a bit distracting as well i thought everybody else in the movie was fantastic the young version of alexander skarsgård's character um amleth the, the kid did great he had some pretty heavy emotional scenes um ethan hawks in the movie for a little while playing the dad um Really enjoyed the bad guy. Um, what's his name? Claire Bangs. I don't want to butcher all of the Icelandic names, but uh, the accents, the 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 speech. There's not a 
tremendous amount of dialogue in the movie, but you want to pay attention because you quickly learn that they're people of few words and what they say means everything. You know, it, the sentence might be four or five words, but it conveys a paragraph <laughs> in what, in its intent, what they're trying to say. Um, the language is very colorful. It's very, um, it's full of imagery, but you get, oh, oh, that's what she meant by the, the crow flies at this time or the sword can only be sheathed at this time or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, there's also some mystical aspects in it, and he's he's always weaved that into his movies, um, more so in each one. All of this stuff comes from the stuff of legends, the the, the actual accurate um, things that these people believed and if they believe that they had these female souls inside them, which kind of control their actions and they need to, to make them happy in their in what they do in the world and the die in battle and all that kind of stuff, that Klingon kind of thing. Um, it's just all very authentic, and that makes the movie just feel more real. The trailers sell it as a big action movie. It's like two hours and 15 minutes. It doesn't. It didn't feel like it to me. It just feels epic. And I, you say that about a three-hour Avengers Endgame. That movie is epic because it's freaking three hours and it, it, it's a it's an endurance test to sit in it this is more epic like what you're seeing on the screen is not things you've seen before uh the lifestyle um the the cinematography <laughs> again you you give an indie filmmaker who's made two beautiful gorgeous incredibly authentic and real movies and you give him a lot of money and let the studio um he said in an interview this week that he this is the only movie he's made that he didn't have final cut on it but he also didn't give him much to cut um it feels like an epic fable like an epic story that needs to be told that's never been told before and you're going to hear that people this is based on the ancient stories that hamlet was based on and many other things since conan if you want um it's a typical revenge story, but they don't elevate it like a lot of modern movies are trying to do. And instead, they got down and dirty with it, they got realistic with it. And so when the, the these mythological, fantastical kind of things happen, the way they're presented in the movie at first is like, oh, this is actually happening. And then there's kind of a twist and you're like, oh. That was probably in their head. It's how they perceive things. It's based on how they were raised and the stories they were told. Um, I think that's masterfully done. I, I, Robert Edgars gets better with every movie, and this is the best movie he's made. It's it's Again, it's not for everybody. I'm going to sing its praises and give it five stars and call it one of the best movies of the year. But if you don't like this kind of thing, if you don't want to be immersed in, a, in 900 A.D. and dirty, grimy people doing dirty, grimy things. Maybe it's not your cup of tea, but it's that epic revenge story of a, of a, of a child avenging his father, his mother, and killing the guy who, or at least attempting to kill the guy who caused all his pain. And in their culture, that's like one of the highest honors you can do. It's explained early in the movie that that's, you know, you're expected of that. If you're the son of a king, um, it's your life's mission to hopefully have that happen one day to a certain extent. Um, so like I said, it's not quite the action movie that the trailers, um, make it out to be, but we're used to John Wick where it's two hours of pretty much nonstop action with small character beats. This is more a real movie. And when the action happens, it's incredible. Instead of shaky cam, instead of heavy editing, there's a lot of just long shots where you just follow this actor as he mows through people. <laughs> And it's all done in one take and one camera, and it, it it takes you there. All of this takes you there. The stuff in between. All of the scenes are filmed in natural light, like all of his movies. Um, you're like, man, this castle's kind of dim. You know, but it's night when he gets home, you know, and it's wintertime. <laughs> um, I know they filmed a lot of it in Ireland, um, but it looks like Iceland, and, and I guess parts of it were filmed. Again, Robert Edgars was given a huge budget to make the perfect Viking epic. And if they never make another one, this would be nice if it spurs off more kind of authentic uh, movies from different time periods. I, I think there's all sorts of stories to mine for this kind of thing. He doesn't quite Beowulf it or, or make it a, a big mythological thing. It still feels quite grounded, even though it's got a few fantastical elements. And the and the finale, much has been made of the, uh, you know, there's obviously the whole movie leads to a big epic fight. Um it is. 
<laughs> it's, you've never seen anything like it. It's funny. I, I read a review after I watched the movie as somebody compared the final fight. Uh, the only thing I compared it to is like the Anakin uh, Skywalker uh, Obi-Wan fight uh, next to the volcano. Yeah, and that was done like a cartoon compared to this. This is this is two burly naked guys trying to kill each other in, in a volcano. It's It's appropriately epic. The whole movie is. Last thing I'll say, again, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but this is one of the best films of the year. Uh, It's going to clean up at the Academy Awards, at least for things like cinematography, technical stuff, maybe acting. I don't know. Um, Alexander Skarsgård and the rest of the cast get pretty animalistic about it. And very, again, it's very authentic. It's very realistic for the time. They believed and they needed to inhabit these these bear spirits or have these bear spirits in them and these wolf spirits and whatever. Um, And he's kind of a combination. (laughs) I know the guy played Tarzan, and he's done some other major uh, transformative acting roles, but this is, it, he disappears into the role. It, he is the North Man. And I got to say, I, I would see the, the movie. I was going to throw in in the beginning that Robert Edgers is not the most rewatchable of directors. I think a lot of people watch his movies and are affected by them and, and go, wow, that was great. But And you can appreciate them on that level. I went back and watched The Witch Thursday night with someone who hadn't seen it. Both really enjoyed it. Uh, me getting more out of it again because, wow. I And The Witch is fairly short in comparison to The Lighthouse and this. The Lighthouse, I'm now a couple years removed from the last time I saw it, so I need to see it again. But I've always considered it to be some of the best acting that Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson has done and some of the best stuff that uh, Robert Edgers had done up to now. But now we have The Northman, and I'm already ready to pre-order the 4K, and I'll probably see it again in a bigger theater if possible. Yeah, it's biggest theater with the best sound system you can. Go see The Northman. Uh, arguably the best movie I've seen so far this year and and will wind up easily in my top um, three or four at the end of the year. Fantastic movie. Um, Best Viking movie ever made. What else can you say? Scott Hamilton, I'm Rockfile. Check out my links below. Thank you very much for listening and have a spectacular day. Go see The Northman on a big, big screen.